Welcome back, Silver and Black today, an Odyssey original podcast covering your Las Vegas Raiders. Scott Colbranson, Mo Moten with you. Hope you're having a good start to your week. I know, I know, the mini bye week, the long weekend after the disaster that was Thursday night didn't give you uh, much pause. In fact, Mo, uh, is, as I bring Mo in now, Mo, uh, over the weekend, it didn't seem to die down. Raider Nation is in just a rare mood. We're going to get into that. We're going to have like a wild card show today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let loose on a couple subjects and get your, your opinions on them. And we're going to mm-hmm. talk through some of this stuff, everything from Darren Waller seemingly more concerned with his hip-hop career than getting back on the field, <laughs> to Derek Carr's future in Las Vegas, to Josh McDaniel's future in Las Vegas. We're going to talk about about it all, but man, I'll tell you what, it is as bad as ever out on the information highway in the social media channels amongst Raider Nation. There's a lot of infighting, a lot of blaming, and a lot of unhappy fans. Well, that's what happens when you're five and eight and your team had a (laughs) chance to get back into the the play. I'll say it now, playoff hunt, because I'll say the P word now, which is playoff, (laughs) because the Raiders' chances of making the playoffs are virtually remote right now, so... The Raiders had a chance to get back into the playoff hunt, and they absolutely blew it. Uh, a lot of people to blame for it, but as you said, Raiders fans uh, and a lot of people out there, just people in general, the natural reaction is to who is to blame, who is most yeah. to blame for the Raiders' losses. And I have an answer for that today, so I'll provide. That. Oh, an answer! I like that. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna listen. We're by the way, for those of you who usually watch our video, we have video up, but as you can see, it's just one image because. I have the flu, uh, but we wanted to get a show done, and so I'm not about to put myself on air looking like death warmed over, Uh, (laughs) although some of you might say, hey, you look like death warmed over usually, so uh, whatever, but we're we're doing it audio only today, so thanks to you guys on YouTube. If you're just watching us there, the chat, I'm sure, will still go crazy. But Mo, I want to start to, uh, we're going to get, I want to start with Josh McDaniels in a second, but first I want to talk about kind of some of the... The new stuff that came up. So after the epic collapse, and I keep calling it epic collapse because I think Mm -hmm. it was, uh, on Thursday night against the Rams, um, uh, Darren Waller, who's now eligible to come off the injured reserve, puts out a massive campaign around his new hip-hop record. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, if you got multiple talents, God bless you. Use them. Use your brand. Whatever you got to do. I'm totally for that. But... They just lost a game that basically ended their playoff chances. And not only did they do that, but they became the laughing stock of all of sports. Forget the NFL. Of all of sports for this season. And Darren Waller thought that that was a good time to put it out. This is where I have the issue. I know we've defended him a lot on this show going back to when he went to the Padres game, to he went to the WNBA games, all that stuff. But at the very least, you said it best in a text message between you, I, and Evan Grote. You said, at the very worst, it is tone deaf. And I think that's the perfect thing. Tone deaf is is an understatement, maybe, because your team just got hammered, just gave up a 98-yard drive to Baker Mayfield off the plane, and you're you're concerned with promoting your hip-hop career. Mo, this really, I think, lost fans. It absolutely did. I mean, fans are already impatient with Darren Waller because how many times have he, has he almost been back almost right. to not come back so fans are already didn't want him to be at a I believe it was a Padres game with Kelsey Plum Pe- mm-hmm. you know people didn't want people already didn't want him to come out his house when he was on <laughs> injured reserve so now to put out a hip-hop rap video it just it's just like salt in the wound especially after what happened with the Rays. but I will say someone tweeted at me and they and made a great point that a lot of these music videos are preset to come out a certain date. True. So he obviously didn't know that the Raiders were going to, you know, give up for what's it, 14 points in, in about three and a half minutes to Baker Mayfield and the injury riddled the Rams. So that may not be his fault, but having the YouTube video out right after and promoting it is just, as I said, it's at worst, it's tone deaf. I, like I said, I don't think it's intentional to rub the salt in the wound, obviously, but the timing just couldn't be any worse. No, and then, of course, Monday he was doing more promotion because, like you said, when you put out a record, you're going to promote it. Right. And and exactly. so it's football season. He's a football player. He hasn't played, but he's a football player. And so I get the the record company, his people putting it out and promoting it. But also you kind of just have to say, you know what, maybe it's not the right thing. You know, give me give it a couple days. Make make sure I'm back on the field before before you do that. But we haven't seen him back on the field yet, so we'll see what happens when they get back to practice. 
But overall, I just think that people are you know, in a season, like you said, where you are five and eight, things have gone terribly wrong so many different ways. Um, it's just it's hard for the average fan who works for a living. Uh, and I, I get your point about, hey, this video could have been done six months ago, to which I'd say six months ago he wasn't playing in on the field either. So so maybe it's compounded by that. But I, I just think this 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 seems to happen. It seems to happen organizationally around the Raiders, things that shouldn't have. Now, it's gone down a lot this year compared to last year when we had the Damon Arnett stuff, all that jazz with John Gruden. But um, organizationally, too, I thought that perhaps this was kind of under wraps because you haven't seen anybody else really even promoting their stuff, whether, if, you know, now if it's charity or something like that, totally fine. You get that piece of it. But this is the only one I've seen this year. And it, so it seems like I think that also may be making it worse because people have seen other players kind of dial that stuff back. Right. But I, I think it to a greater point, I think this shows that this is not the Patriot way, because do you think mm -hmm. Bill Belichick would have his star player promoting his hip hop uh, song uh, no. and video <laughs> at this point in the season? If you're five and eight, no, not going to happen. I think Josh McDaniels, I think it's a correction from his previous uh, coaching stint. Usually when you when you fail at something, when you make a mistake at something, usually you you dial it back so much that you go the complete opposite direction where you could be on the opposite side of the spectrum. So if you were too strict in one area and one stint, you may be too loose on your second time around because you were too strict the first time. Yeah. So not to say that Josh McDaniels is running a, a loose ranch over there in Vegas, but I think he looks at it as, okay, we knew Darren Waller was into music when we got here. We knew that when we signed him to an extension. So whatever comes with it, we were prepared for that. So I don't I don't think it's on Joshua Daniels with Dave Ziegler's radar. Mm -hmm. But Raiders fans are going to get mad at me when I say this, but I would still consider trading Darren Waller. And it's not because he put out a, a video <laughs> at this time. It's not it's not all about the video. It's not about him missing training camp. It's just the fact that I've been banging this drum for months now. He's a depreciating asset. Right. He's getting older. He's injury, he's injury prone now. I know a lot of people want to say he was reliable two years ago. Well, that was two years ago. That's right. That last two, two off ago. seasons, he's last two off seasons, he's been banged up. He hasn't been available now. We'll see if he comes back to end the season. We'll find out. But at this point of time, at his age, players don't get healthier as they get older. They deal with more injuries. You know, the injuries <laughs> start to pile up. So I, I just feel like it, it you know, you, you re sign Hunter Renfro and Darren and Devontae Adams is your target guy. He's the guy that you want to give 10 plus targets to a game. Mm -hmm. How how important is Waller to the offense if you have Devontae Adams as your lead guy? And if Hunter Renfro starts to get himself back together and starts to look like the player that he was last year. Yeah. No, I yeah. agree. I would I think... say I would I would say Waller is an expendable. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, that's okay. And I think you're going to see a lot of roster turnover, which is going to get to the point I'm going to make later in the show about some changes I think have to happen with the Raiders, whether you like them or not. And that's what I'm going to say, not just because I'm sick and ornery, because I am. I've been stuck in bed all weekend uh, and on Monday. But I want to say that I think the Raiders are just in a situation where, yeah, you maybe it's not a quote-unquote teardown rebuild, but there's a lot of changes that need to be need to happen uh, you mentioned one of them trading Darren Waller. I think is a no brainer. I think you got to do it. I think there's no question in my mind that they have to do it. They released John Simpson. Remember, we saw John Simpson come in on Thursday night after Alex Bars went out injured. Done with him. Another Gruden draft pick. See you later. Uh, then JT the Brick goes on his radio show on my former station, Raider Nation Radio, talks about how there's going to be repercussions for Thursday night's loss on the roster. Um, I, I don't know what that means. Um, that's the second week in a row JT's gone on his show and said something similar to that, and we've seen change happen. And I can't believe that that was just John Simpson. There has to be something more there. I think you're going to see guys like Trayvon Morag maybe gone. I, mean, I think you're going to see guys like Cleveland Furl now gone. I think you're going to see guys like Derek Carr maybe gone, and we'll get to that later. I know that's going to cause a, a rip-roaring uh, fight, fight, as you guys have dubbed it, Car Wars in a minute. But but Mo, I think that you look at what's going on here. I think Mark Davis has been incredibly patient. You saw the early season struggles and they get on the three game losing or winning streak. And he's been patient and said, look, no, I, I, I like where they're going with this. 
But after this last collapse, uh, especially defensively, you know, we got off the pat the, the fire Patrick Graham wagon for a while there as far as the fans go. And you saw what happened at the end of the game with the defensive scheme. And you just wonder, how does somebody at the NFL level with a job as a defensive coordinator do something like that? So I, I think that while there's patience, you have to look and say, this doesn't work how it is right now. You're right. And one of the questions that I've been not avoiding, but I haven't really broached yet because I want to I kind of want to see the entire season. Mm -hmm. But Patrick Graham, is he the answer as a defensive coordinator? I know as as a new coach of staff, you want to bring your guys in to fit a specific system. And obviously the Raiders had to take over from the previous staff with Gus Bradley. So Patrick Graham may not have, quote unquote, his guys all the way through yet, but you you just mentioned the gaff at the end of the game. You know Sam Webb is an undrafted rookie, and you have him out there on an island. I mean, I, it looks like the safety's over the top. I mean, <laughs> Deron Harmon made a mistake there yeah. and not covering over the top, but you know you have a rookie out there who hasn't started for the entirety of the season. He's basically a backup. You, you have to drill it into your players that he needs help on the outside. You just can't give that up. So my question would be right now that the Reds need to answer it is Patrick Graham really the guy, right? Because to me, he's starting to look more like Paul Gunther <laughs> <laughs> where maybe the scheme is too complicated for these players. And, and as I said, I said this during the off season, that was one of the, my concerns about Patrick Graham was that when he's with the giants, uh, Logan Ryan said this, and he said, basically, the Giants had to pare down their scheme because not that it was too complicated or complex, but you had to get back to the fundamentals and the basics because as they were adding things into the playbook, into the scheme, things were just out of sorts. So they had to they had to pare it down and get back, not vanilla, so to speak, but just kind of, you know, shorten down, not shorten down the playbook, but just kind of. Make it so that it's easier to digest for players right. when they're out there on the field. They're not thinking too much and they're just reacting to the action. They're just they're just playing. They're not thinking too much. Yeah. And I think, like I said, I think that may be an issue very similar to what the Reyes had with uh, Paul Gunther. Yeah, it sounds eerily familiar, my friend. All right, we're going to take our first break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about the case, my case at least, against... Josh McDaniels returning. I know, I know, he'll probably be back. I'm, 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 I'm saying 98%. But I'm going to tell you why I think he shouldn't be. Yes, that's where I'm at. We'll talk about that here on Silver and Black today, an Odyssey original podcast covering the Las Vegas Raiders. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Should Josh McDaniels return in 2023? That's the question for this segment here on Silver and Black today, an Odyssey original podcast. If you haven't already subscribed to the show, please do Mo and I a favor. Do so wherever you get your podcast. Just look for Silver and Black today. Subscribe. Put on the auto downloads, and you'll get the show pushed to you every time we publish a new one. Uh, we're back. We're talking Raiders football. If you're watching this on video, uh, I'm under the weather, so we are doing uh, video, but it's mostly just audio, so appreciate that. If you're in the chat, we're in the chat. Mixing it up with you. Thanks again, as always, and thanks again to everybody out there for your support of Silver and Black today. Mo Moten, he is the national NFL writer at Bleach Report, also the Raiders columnist at SportsNot.com. You can follow him on Twitter, at Mo Moten, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. You can follow me as well, L-V Gully. That's L-V-G-U-L-L-Y. And the show is SNB today. Okay, Mo, here, here I'm going to lay it out for you a little bit. I'm going to simplify it because this has been bantied a lot. And, and I was back to what we talked about uh, when you returned after you were out uh, for health reasons. Um, and Josh McDaniels coming back. And the whole idea that, listen, the last thing the Raiders organization needs is instability. It's been it's been unstable for decades. Okay, going back to even before the great Al Davis passed away, coach after coach has come through and and very quick uh, to turn the page and fire somebody when they don't perform up to an ability to have a rough year. Gone, right? So we've seen that happen, and I've been on board with that. I've been on board with listen. You bring in a new coach, okay? It doesn't always go as you plan. You got to give the guy a chance. But I have to say, I've changed my mind on this, and it's primarily because what I've done now is I've looked at the totality of what has happened to this team over the course of the year. That includes the winning streak, okay? But if I look at the number 
of games this team has lost and how it has been mismanaged. Mismanaged not only during the game, when you talk about game planning, which was in 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 Los Angeles against the Rams, Mo, what you and I have beat the drum. Run Josh Jacobs, run Josh Jacobs, right? Twenty, I think in, in the last three wins, he had 24, 25, and 35 carries uh, and did well in the Raiders win. Comes out against the Rams, a very good rushing defense, by the way. So you know, you know going against this team. It's not like you're going against the Broncos, who aren't terrible, but they're not as good against the run. Or you're going against the Cardinals. This is the Rams who, despite all of their problems, still have a formidable running defense. So his game plan was Josh Jacobs again. Now, I wouldn't disagree with that if you were going against a mediocre Chargers defensive line or whoever. But this was the Rams. He goes in with a very vanilla and and very conservative game plan. They throw to Devontae Adams. They target him seven times. He doesn't have a catch in the second half. What I'm going to argue to you today, Mo, is that not only should Josh McDaniels be gone, he should be gone quickly because I think it's coaching malpractice. I really do. The way he has mismanaged all aspects of this team, including the cultural piece, we saw the meltdown of Derek Carr, everything in the locker room. Now, we don't have locker room sources. We're not inside. We always say that. But from the outside, and when you look at how this team has crumbled in epic fashion, in historic fashion, okay, four times this season, you can't look past the coach. I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt that he had changed since Denver, that it needed time to come together. But I'm now at the point where you can't overcome poor leadership. You can't overcome a coach that's not self-aware enough or surround himself with people that are self-aware enough to know what you're not doing correctly, okay? So you go out and you do this. And I'm always a fan of the adage, you hire slow and you fire fast. Now, I don't know how slow they hired Josh McDaniels. I don't know how long it took. (laughs) But yes, I don't want instability in the organization for the fans. But I will tell you that if you made a mistake, you got to call a spade a spade and get it over with. You're absolutely right. Uh, If you make the wrong hire... If you think it's the wrong hire, then you move on quick. You don't let the you don't let a you don't turn a bad mistake into a, a long lingering miscue. The problem is Mark Davis thinks he made the right hire. <laughs> so he <laughs> this doesn't. is true. <laughs> That's the problem. I mean, Mark Davis has already come out and said, "Look, he he put his support behind Joshua Dillon." And a lot of people say that's the that's the uh, what do they call it the vote of death confidence whatever oh, you yeah. want to call it yeah yep. the dreaded I, I, I vote of confidence the d- dreaded vote of confidence i don't think it's that i think he obviously is going to ride it out with Josh McDaniels for at least another year because as i've said in previous shows that's the guy he hired so a bad hire would mean that mark davis himself made a mistake now to your point i mm-hmm. agree with you you cannot have a football team with Devontae adams josh jacobs Derek carr and lose four games in which you had a 13 plus point lead but really quick, I want to read a frustrating stat for you and any Raider fan listening to this. Are you are you ready for this one? <laughs> Lay it on me, Daddy O. <laughs> the the Raiders are 0 and 5 when Devontae Adams has five or fewer catches. Right? And in three of those five losses were the game were games that they've had 13 plus mm-hmm. point leads. Kansas City, Arizona, and the Rams. They lost all three of those games, and in all three of those games, Devontae Adams had Fewer than five catches. So I will say this, knowing this, right? <laughs> Why are you not getting the ball by any yes. means to Devontae Adams? Why? And, and it goes to my point. Now, you can say, well, the other team is rolling coverage toward him. He's getting double coverage. He's getting triple coverage. They're doing this. They're doing that. And I will say, I will go back to what Devontae Adams said about a month ago. He said, look, and I'm paraphrasing. Look, I get double coverage, but throw me the ball anyway. I, you didn't bring me here to just win against single coverage. If I'm, if you consider Devontae Adams arguably the best, the the best wide receiver in the league, you have to give him the ball anyway, because yeah. he's. We've seen him do it. We've seen him catch balls when he's got two guys draped all over him, or he's got a safety over the top. We've seen that happen when you when you and I said this with you and Murph when we were on after the game on Thursday that. There's no way you can scheme to get Matt Collins the ball 
on some carries, but you can't scheme to get Devontae <laughs> Adams open on some pass catches. There's just no way. You cannot give me that excuse. So if you could scheme a, a much lesser player, no disrespect to Mac Collins, but he's not Devontae Adams. If you can design some plays for, for Mac, you can design some plays for Devontae. And there's no reason why Devontae Adams should finish any game with less than five catches unless he's under 100% and just not performing well, but especially in games where you've had 13-plus point leads. just no way that should happen. Right, and, and in all games where he was targeted more than seven times, they're 5-0. and oh. I mean, it's – and this is my point. This is where I get to – this is coaching malpractice. I mean, it really is because I don't understand how Josh McDaniels can look at this and think – well, yeah, I'm going to go out against the Rams' good rushing defense. Now, look, Josh Josh Jacobs still had almost 100 yards, 99 yards to be exact, okay? Mm-hmm. He still did okay, and he was hurt again. Mm-hmm. His third injury, and he still got 100 yards. Mm-hmm. But you have to supplement. You have It's called, uh-oh, Mo, here we go. It's your favorite time, adjustments. Remember adjustments? <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, those things. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> you have to make adjustments. So... An NFL coach that doesn't make adjustments? I mean, you're, you're, and here's the other thing, Mo. This is crazy. And I, I almost sound like a fan here because I'm so angry about it. But your playoff life is on the line. And you just say, no, nah, we're good. We're just going to keep doing what we do. Yeah, we're running into the wall and the door won't open. We're pushing and it says pull, but we're going to keep pushing. Right? So I, I don't get it. I think, I think. If you look at what Josh McDaniels has done, I get what you're saying. Mark Davis thinks he's doing a good job. Fantastic but, job. But <laughs> fantastic job, yes. But I will tell you this. I think one of the other issues here, I can't go without saying, is the closeness between Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels. Now, mm-hmm. Mark Davis signed up for that too when he hired them both together as a tandem. So will Josh McDaniels get another year? Probably. Should he? Absolutely not. I mean, there's a slew of stories this week about how he's the worst coach ever. <laughs> Excuse me, the worst coach ever. And I don't know about that, but it's it's tough days. It, it's definitely tough days, but I'm going to go into a bigger point, and I'm going to try to make this concise um, because okay. this is – I think this is part of a larger problem because people will say, yeah, Devontae Adams should get the ball, Right. But why isn't Derek Carr throwing to him? Because oh. he ultimately is the guy that has to throw the football, right? So if if Devontae should get the ball, and he should, Derek Carr should be the guy to get it to him. And I will say this is this is another problem that's not talked about a lot. And I mentioned it briefly during the season. Derek Carr, every time he gets to the podium, he says, I'm going to run the play that Josh wants. And I think that's a problem to an extent. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't want your quarterback to go completely, completely rogue. But your quarterback is the guy that sees the coverages and he's making decisions in real time, right? So if he just goes by the letter of the book, it just does what Josh McDaniels wants, sometimes Josh McDaniels may be wrong on something. Maybe Josh <laughs> McDaniels doesn't have the greatest plan in certain situations. You, I think as a quarterback in the league for nine years, you have to have the free reign to say, you know what, in this situation, I'm going to overrule Josh McDaniels and I'm going to make the best decision in this split moment, in this specific moment, I'm going to make the split decision to throw to Devontae Adams, even though the play was to go to Mac Hollins, even though the play was to go to Foster Moreau, even though the play is to go in the flat. I'm going to go to Devontae Adams because I know Devontae Adams gives me the best chance to get a first down, to get a touchdown, to move the ball when we're stagnant. Mm-hmm. I think that's part of the problem. Derek Carr is too loyal to whatever the game plan is. Now, I don't know what percentage of the plays he changes or, or goes against Josh McDaniels or overrules him. I'm obviously not in a huddle. But when he goes to the podium and he says, basically says, I just do what Josh McDaniels wants, I cringe a little bit because at a certain point, Josh McDaniels, what he, what he called at the moment, may not be the best play. And you have to be the quarterback, the guy that's smart enough in the huddle to say, you know what? I'm calling an audible here and I'm I'm taking a different route. And I, don't, and I think when Devontae Adams has less than five catches in a game, that's when Derek Cross has to go off and say, look, I'm going to do it this way. I know Josh McDaniels wanted it done that way, but I'm going to do it this way. Right, because after all, Josh McDaniels is not on the field. He's right. not making the plays. Yes, he's the coach. I get it. But you have to, as the quarterback, 
And make no bones about it. The NFL, in the NFL, you win because of your quarterback. You have to have a quarterback who makes good decisions. That's right. Okay. I mean, you saw Brock Purdy make good decisions this weekend with the 49ers, right? Now, that's one game. Don't get me wrong. I'm not on that bandwagon yet, but I'm just saying <laughs> that's how it goes. And I will say this before we hit a break, and we'll come back, and we're going to talk specifically about Derek Carr. Raider fans, I want you to I want you to digest this. You're not going to be happy, and you're going to throw a bunch of hate at me for it, but that's okay. When you complain about play calling on offense, that means you don't have a franchise quarterback. Okay? You do not have a franchise quarterback if you complain about the play calling. Because unless he's a rookie like Brock Purdy, maybe, the quarterback has the ability to change it up in the line. So we'll talk about that. I'll get Mo's reaction, and we'll talk about why I think – not only should Josh McDaniels be gone, but I think it would be good for Derek Carr to find employment elsewhere and for the Raiders to start over on offense at quarterback. All right, you're listening to Silver and Black today in Odyssey Original Podcast. We'll be back right after this. Hopefully you're staying healthy out there. I got this flu that's going around the country. I know Mo had something similar a little while ago. So if you're out there, be careful. Eat well. Take your vitamins. Get your sleep. Drink lots of water. Don't uh, go on any sushi dates. Don't go on a sushi <laughs> date. That's right. <laughs> uh, but we're back talking Las Vegas Raiders football. Of course, make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get it. Just look for Silver and Black today, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on Google, wherever you get it, that's where you'll find us. We appreciate you uh, and your support of downloading it and subscribing and putting on the auto download has helped as well. If you're watching us on YouTube, yes, no video today uh, as I'm home uh, sick. And so I, I did want to go on video today. But nonetheless, uh, we're, we have the video up with this static image and the audio. So we hope you're there with us there. Uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications bell as well. All right, Mo, here we go. <laughs> we're going to get into I'm going to be forever branded a car hater now, and that's okay. I can take it. Uh, I don't care who blocks me on Twitter, uh, especially if their last name is Carr. I'm sure there's a million of them, and they all block me. That's okay. I'm all right with that. I don't validate my feelings uh, when people block me on Twitter. But um, here's here's where I'm going with this one. And I said before the break that when you play, when you complain too much about play calling, that means you don't have a franchise quarterback. And this is something you actually gave me the perfect opening on last segment when you talked about, hey. Derek Carr says that he on the podium after games I tell what jo I do what Josh tells me to do what plays he calls I go out and I try to execute him. But as we know in the NFL you look at great quarterbacks franchise quarterbacks Josh Allen Patrick Mahomes uh, Tom Brady before this year <laughs> okay um, <laughs> they 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 improvise they see what's on the field and sometimes they have to overreach and not overreach they have to overrule their coach and go with a play they think will work based on what they see on the field. And then they can go explain to their coach later why they ignored their command, right? That's just the way the NFL works. It's not a problem. It happens every single weekend. With Derek Carr, he's not do that. I just don't think, listen, is Derek Carr a good quarterback? Yes, we talk about it all the time here on the show. A top 15 quarterback? Absolutely. But I just think with, with all of the baggage, with all that has been said, all that has been done, Derek Carr is not going to win a Super Bowl with the Las Vegas Raiders. So if that's the case, then why spend the money? Why not move on? See, if it was my perfect world, I would get a new coach and allow the new coach to select their new quarterback. Maybe that's what they should have done this past year. I don't know. But to me, I look at, I look at Derek Carr, and I use this analogy, and excuse me if it's not an articulate one with all these cold meds in me, but it's sort of like you're dating somebody and, you know, they're nice and all that. And yeah, but you're not getting real serious with them or you've been you've been with them for a long time and they're great and all, but they're not really the one. They're not the one that you see your rest of your life with. And, and but you're afraid to make that move. You're afraid to leave them because then you'll be alone you, and it's uncertainty. and You're not sure what's going to happen. And maybe you maybe you get another significant other and they're not as good as that person in some ways, but in other ways they are. So you, you just don't know. I think that's where people are with the like. Well, if we don't, if we get rid of car, what if that? What if we get something worse? Well, what if you do? So what? Maybe you have to go through. Maybe you got to go through a little bit of the mud before you get out of it and turn things in the right direction. Derek Carr is not going to be here in five years. I think it's going to take two years, three years for this team to turn it around. By the time you do that, he's done. 
So why would you keep him? Why would you keep him? And again, I don't think he has the ability to transcend the weaknesses of his teams to win. All this talk, mm-hmm. fans, he's never had a defense. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. But one thing has remained. Derek Carr has stayed with the Raiders. He had chances to leave. He could have left. He didn't. He signed up for it. I get it. But at the same time, I just don't believe that he's going to be the guy to get you there. Can he win? Could could the Giants sign him next year and plug him in and do okay with him? I'm sure they could. Could he win somewhere else? Maybe. But as you and I have said before on this show, Mo, if you surround him in the perfect situation, he can win. And could he win a Super Bowl? I think so. The perfect situation in Las Vegas ain't happening in the next three years. That's that's where I'm at. And that's why I say it's time for Carr to go. Not because I think he's a crappy player. Not because I'm a hater. Not because I don't think he can play football still. I just think it's time. He is not your future. He's not the future. And so if you're looking towards the future now, and you're going to have all this turnover on defense, which you need to have, you're starting over on defense, basically, with the exception of Max Crosby, okay, and a couple guys. And then on offense, you got to fix that offensive line. you got to probably go get another tight end. you got to get another wide receiver. Hey, you're already in that rebuilding mode, sort of. So why would you commit to the quarterback? That's, that's where I'm at, Mo, today. I don't blame you. And I think a lot of Raider fans, I think a, a good half of the fan base is there with you, while the other half is cursing you right now. But I will <laughs> say... Okay. I'll take I, it. I will I will say what I don't like to engage in on Twitter. And when I say sometimes I'm like, I'm not going to get myself involved in these Derek Carr car wars, as I call them, mm-hmm. is when it's one or the other. Right. Because there's one group that says the problem is Derek Carr. He's been here for nine years. The, he's the common denominator. And I get that. The other side says, well, as you pointed out. Defense has been bad since Derek Carr got here. If the mm-hmm. Raiders had a better defense, you get you get better results. I can agree with that. Here's the thing. It's both. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. And I'll, and I'll say this, right? Derek Carr hasn't had a defense that's ranked better than 20th in scoring. Right? But on the same, on the other side of the coin, there are two stats that stuck out to me after the Raiders lost, I believe, on Thursday. One, Derek Carr has the lowest completion rate in, in the red zone this season. Lower than Kenny Pickett, lower than Davis Mills, who, by oh. the way, has been who's been benched. By the way, Derek Carr's red zone completion rate is thirty nine point six percent, and he's <laughs> below a rookie and a player who's been benched in a in, critical in, area of the field. In year nine, not in year two. In year nine, right? In year nine. The other thing here's the other stat: Derek Carr. 14 career red zone interceptions tied for the most in the league since he entered the league in 2014. So when you talk about the Raiders' red zone woes and all the play calling or the design is bad, guess what? Derek Carr is part of that problem. And it, and it's decision-making because people came at me after I, after I criticized Derek Carr for throwing that pick before halftime against the Rams. And they say, well, he was bumped by a defender who pushed his guard <laughs> back and his guard deserves some to blame. And I get that, yes. But he still let that ball go. And, you, and you're going to say, well, it was a split-second decision. The ball was already in motion to be out of his hands. Okay, even if – let's say that is true. How do you defend leading the league in, in red zone interceptions since 2014? Yeah. Tie with Phillip Rivers, who Raider fans love to make fun of. Tie with <laughs> Randon Tannehill, who we can all agree is not a top 15 quarterback. I would say he's maybe top 22, 23. Ryan and Ryan Fitzpatrick, who, by the way, is retired and now doing Amazon Prime on Thursday nights. And Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> is the quintessential backup quarterback. Now, I'm right. not saying Derek Carr is a backup quarterback, but what I'm saying is for all the talk that how good Derek Carr is, his red zone numbers, his red zone decision making should be a lot better. No doubt. <clears throat> and, and and I get what the, 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 the argument on the defense, and it's been thrown around a lot this season. And But I go back to when the Chiefs in 2019 won the Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes. I think they might have just been inside the top 20, maybe 18, 19, somewhere around there, if I recall correctly. So what I'm saying is, if again, if you're making excuses, then you don't have a franchise quarterback. Now, that doesn't mean that a franchise quarterback wins a Super Bowl without a defense or without 
complementary players. But I just think that you're in the case now where this is much more about, well, we don't know what we're going to get if we move away from him, so why would we move away from him? And to me, that's faulty logic. So because you might not get a better quarterback for a year or two or however long it takes, you think that you should stick with the guy anyway, despite like the stats you've given? Listen, the biggest problem with Derek Carr isn't that he's not a good quarterback, because he is. The biggest problem is consistency. And I'm sorry, nine and nine and a half years now, I don't think that I want a quarterback that can't be consistent and that and that isn't going to stick up to the coach and, and make the play on the field that's going to help the team win, even if that means, hey, I got to go my own way. Plenty of quarterbacks do it. Raider fans make fun of Justin Herbert. And why do they make fun of him? He hasn't won anything. Well, um, there's a guy that wears number four in the Raiders who hasn't won anything either, Mo. And so this mm-hmm. this constant comparison to other – even you had somebody on Twitter talking about Josh Allen. I was like, are you kidding me? Don't even – don't even try. <laughs> don't even try. Because there's five quarterbacks in the NFL to me that are that are above all, right? And that's, that's Mahomes. That's Josh Allen. That now is Justin Herbert, I believe. You have um, um, Jalen Hurts, too. Have an MP, MVP-type year, Right. So there's four mm-hmm. right there. Those guys, look. Uh, sorry? Joe Burrow. Joe, Joe Burrow, Burrow. Sorry. Thank you. That was the fifth. Oh, by the way, Joe mm-hmm. Burrow had no offensive line, had one wide receiver last year that was really performing well. Now, he's got T. Higgins and those guys, and they play well. But really, they won last year because of one guy on offense, and that was Jamar Chase with no offensive line and a defense that was okay, but not great. But those guys don't make excuses. They just go win. They just win. I'm sorry, they do. And and if that hurts your feelings and you want to call me a hater, so be it. I'm not. Anybody who's listened to this show for six years knows that I don't hate Derek Carr. I like Derek Carr. He's a good dude and a good quarterback. I just think he's not going to make you – He's not. you're not going to win a championship with Derek Carr, no matter how well he does or doesn't do. So to me, it, I think it behooves you. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. I don't get paid to make that decision. Right. But I will tell you, you can get a bridge quarterback, a veteran. He's not going to do any worse. I don't think he's going to do any worse. Here, here's my proposal. And I've proposed this in, on previous shows. I've said, it, look, it's going to be hard to trade Derek Carr because he has that no trade clause because there's no chance they're just going to cut him for cap space, in my opinion. Right. right. So it, let's say he, he doesn't want to go anywhere else. Now, he said that. Now, people say things at the podium and it doesn't mean when you know what hits the fan and that's what they decide to do. But let's say he, he says, no, I, I either play for the Raiders or retire. I would think at that point, even if you're thinking about saying, okay, car, we're going to start you for another two years and, and you know, we'll revisit this. I think regardless, the Raiders should draft a quarterback, whether mm-hmm. they plan to stick with car or not. And I propose this propose this. I think they should draft a quarterback by the latest day two of, of the draft, simply because, as you said, I don't think Derek Carr is going to be playing football five years down the line. I don't see him as a Tom Brady who says, I'm going to play till I'm 45 no. years old. No. I, that's definitely, in my opinion, that's definitely not him. So what you do is you draft the quarterback, maybe not in the first round, but as we talked about, maybe Hooker out of Tennessee drops because of his injury. Mm-hmm. You pick him up, maybe he turns into a starter down the line. So he's an older quarterback, more mature. I would I would consider that option simply because Josh McDaniels has also said this. You always want a developmental quarterback sitting in the chamber just in case your starter is not ready or just in case you have to pivot. Always have a quarterback who's ready to go. Because, I mean, look at what happened. I know this is a totally different situation, but look at what happened with the Jets this year, right? They drafted Zach Wilson, number two overall, not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Turns out he's not Turns out he's not the guy. He he. Uh, Jay Glazer of Fox Sports said, He's lost confidence in himself. The team has lost confidence in him, and that's why they benched him. So guess who comes in and is playing pretty well, even though the Jets have lost against the Bills this past weekend? Mike White comes in. Now, I know he was a late, late rounder. Wasn't a day two guy. But it turns out Mike White can move the ball with the weapons that the Jets have. Yes. Right? So you always, to my point, you always have a backup plan who's definitely capable. <clears throat> and I think the Raiders need to have that, whether they – plan to keep Carr or not, I'm still in the camp that I think Carr gets year 10 because I think they look at his connection with Devontae Adams and how 
when they throw the ball to Devontae Adams, it works pretty well. And I don't think they're going to want to pivot from that. But I will <clears> say, if you go into the next year and Carr is still making the same mistakes and he doesn't look that much better than he did this year, guess what? The backup quarterback comes in, takes over the job, and maybe he's just as good, if not better than Carr. Who knows? We don't know yeah. that. Yeah. And I, as you said, a lot of fans want to think of the negative. But what if the guy next guy is worse? What if we get an Andrew, Walt, <laughs> Andrew Walter again or another uh, Tui Asasopo or something like that? Well, what if he's not? Exactly. What if he turns into the what if he's Jalen Hurts? Yes. And you remember know, Jalen I'm Hurts. Sure the Eagles, Jalen yeah. Hurts was written right. off, remember? So was Trevor yeah. Lawrence. And really, uh, to me, it's right. it's by you have to listen, you have to look at Thanksgiving by the second year of a quarterback starting. If they haven't put it together by then, then you could start to be skeptical. But both those guys have done it. Look at New York, <laughs> Daniel Jones, the Giants. He hasn't put it together yet. Right? So, so you're right. Will Carr be back? Most likely. But again, the reason shouldn't be because you're afraid that there might be a guy who's not as good. Because right now, he's only, you look at the quarterback rankings, he's only two above Andy Dalton, folks. Sorry. Andy Dalton. And by the way, the Saints are only one game worse than the Raiders. So you can't tell me if you got rid of Derek Carr. If somebody wanted to trade for him and Derek Carr, wait, let's say it's the Jets, Mo, and he comes to live near you. And the Jets say, "Hey, we'll give you we'll give you this for for Derek Carr." And and Derek Carr says, "Yeah, I'll go play in New York for a couple of years." I, I'll say this really quick, Scott. I think Derek Carr and rare fans are going to get mad at me for this. I think Derek <laughs> Carr would be a better fit for the Jets than he is right now for the Raiders. And I say I that because I, do too. I say that because the Jets have a real defense. The Jets have a yeah. top ten defense. Right. So then we can finally see what Derek Carr looks like. With a top tier defense. Yes. The Jets just, just had to figure out their quarterback position. They Robert Sala brought that good defense from San Francisco to New York. Mm -hmm. They had the defense. They just needed to figure out the quarterback situation. This is why they benched Zach Wilson because he wasn't good enough for a team that can win right now. Derek Carr in a Jets uniform, I believe that team is a playoff team. But how good would he be with that top tier defense? I would mm. want to see that because the Raiders, as you said, the Raiders, when's the last time the Raiders have had a decent <laughs> defense? Now, I remember they they were forcing turnovers at one point with Khalil Mack and, and Bruce Irvin, but even then they were giving up points. Yes. So I think he'd be a better fit in New York. But, I want to see that. But that's my point. That's exactly the whole crux of my argument, Mo. Not if the Raiders had a top five defense right now and had struggled and just were were, were not playing well and this is what where they were, then fine. But I'll tell you, even with the draft capital, even with the most optimistic outlook, the Raiders aren't going to have a top 10 defense in the next two years. Now, they might move up that. They might get to 15 after a couple years when you load it up with some good young talent on defense, on those rookie contracts. Great. But by that time, it's like he's on his swan song. It's the retirement year. So, so to me, that's, that's my point. And that's why... Yes, the Jets would be a great destination. There's a couple other ones I mentioned. The Giants and what Dable's doing there, he'd fit there pretty well. Yep. But but to me, it just doesn't make sense with the Raiders, although I think they'll do it anyway, so what do I know? But yes, yeah, so now we pissed off a lot of people, and I really don't care, because it's not about that. It's not about fighting like you. I don't get in the car wars. I'm not arguing with people. People have their sacred cows, and they're going to they're gonna stand next to them. It doesn't matter. The cow could be rotting and dead, and you're going to tell me it's alive, and it's great. <laughs> so that's cool. That's that's all you, you do. You you do you. I'm not going to argue with you about it. I'm not. I'm not out here to try to convince everybody, right? That's just the way it goes. So okay. But anyway, that's that's it. I mean, that's all I'm going to say about this. And clearly, first show of the week, Mo. Uh, we got our mailbag coming up um, on Wednesday, and then our Thursday show. We'll take a look at the Patriots game. The the Padawan takes on the master Jedi in Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels. Of course, they faced off in the preseason. The Raiders won that game. This will be a whole different thing with the Patriots really trying to gun to get back in that playoff race. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting because, as I said, the, the Raiders blew their chance to climb back in, and the Patriots are still in the thick of things. To, to me, it's... I don't want to say the Patriots have more at stake because, as I mm -hmm. said... You know, the Raiders are looking ahead to see who who stays for next year. But 
I, I'm really interested to see how the energy with the Raiders goes in, in that game. Are you know, are there top players that I don't know Devontae as are bringing all Josh Jacobs, but the other guys that are on the fringe, are they yeah. gonna bring their all or are they just gonna give up? Because if they give up on Josh McDaniels, to me, that's another referendum of why you would you would get rid of Josh McDaniels yeah. if he loses the team during his final stretch. Yeah, and you'll get a sense too for who wants to be there, who wants to wear the silver and black still, right? So not only playing for the coach, but playing for the colors. <laughs> and that emblem on the side of the helmet that so many guys have fought valiantly for over the decades. All right, that's going to complete this week's or Tuesday show uh, of Silver and Black Today and Odyssey Original Podcast. Mo, we'll talk to you uh, for our mailbag show uh, tomorrow. And hopefully you're feeling a lot better and, and Raiders <laughs> fans haven't uh, all blocked you after our, after our uh. show today. That's okay. I'm sure, I'm sure that they they know I love them and sometimes sometimes those that you love the most have to hear it unfiltered from you. So that's what I was trying to do. Uh, I, I have no doubt they'll agree on Josh McDaniels. I think it's just the Derek Carr thing, of course, because that's oh, yeah. always that's always the one. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Uh, for Mo Moten, I am Scott Colbranson. This has been Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey original podcast. Do us a favor. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And we appreciate that. Put on the auto download. That helps us out significantly. For Mo, I am Scott. And we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care, Raider Nation.